All right, so we're gonna do the beginner's guide to Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. So I'm gonna try to cover the basics, including trying to help you understand what I'm saying, like in terms of some lingo. For YouTube people, I have a link to the fighting game glossary. It will help you a lot when you watch any fighting game content creator, basically. If we're gonna start, we gotta start with the basic of basics, right? All right, you guys can definitely see this, right? This is very unprofessional. This is the first thing that you must learn. If you are from another fighting game and you hate this, I am sorry. And if you're new to fighting games, you don't know what this is. This is the numpad, right? We use numpad notation. So if you just learn this now, your life will be so much fucking easier. You will be able to understand what any input for any type of arc system works game or any anime fighting game. So the five is neutral, six is forward, four is back, the two is down, eight is up. Everything's assuming that you're on the player one side. Straight up, like pause, pause the video and just like look at this and then think about different inputs. Like quarter circle forward would be two, three, six. If you understand this, every fighting game video by me and probably some other people will be way easier for you to understand. So next will be uh, the buttons. So this is a four button game. You can set your controls however you want, I would say. The main things you will be using is A, B, C, and D, right? So A and B are your physical attacks. And then C and D are your persona attacks. There are also combinations of inputs you can use as well. So A plus C will give you the evasive action, right? Down AC gives you short hop. A plus B gives you um, all attack. C, D gives you throw. B, D gives you uh, the universal DP. Three buttons, the A, was it A, B, C? gives you roaming cancel and ACD gives you burst or shadow frenzy. And the last the last one would be uh, air turn in the air, which is you do with AC, okay? These are essentially the controls, the main buttons you need to know for the game. So then some simple off its basics, right? So this game has changed like many other of these fast paced fighting games. The general order is it goes from A to D. So A, B, C, D is something you can do. Uh, most characters have the same general structure of Gatlings with very small changes. It's not like, say, if you try Guilty Gear Exert, the idea is to go from punch kick slash heavy slash dust, but people will have a lot of unique uh, ways to go between uh, the different Gatlings in that game. But then you have Strive where everybody has the same exact Gatlings no matter what. This game is kind of in the middle. Like Everyone basically has the same Gatlings, the same chains with very, very, very small differences. What type of differences would you say, would you say? So, here's a simple one. So Yukari can do three two A's. Numpad, two A. I'm gonna be using numpad notation this whole time, where Margaret cannot do that. I'm mashing, I only get one. All right, so there's like little things like that that vary by character to make the characters feel different and unique because they're different people. Another thing that you're going to want to determine is how often you will be using your persona to attack. A character like Yukari is like a hybrid. Like you, you will use both your normal attacks and your persona attacks together to attack your opponent. Where Margaret leans more towards using her persona a lot. To be honest with her, it's kind of like a stylistic choice. Like most people who I've seen playing online, it's my first time playing people in this game in a very long time. They lean very much towards a lot of her physical buttons, but at a more advanced level, you will use her persona quite a bit to do all sorts of things. So the, each character has like a different way of attacking. Some are more physical types like Akihiko. Some are more persona types like Yukiko and Margaret. So you will want to get used to slash understand what type of character you're jumping into this is gonna help you out a lot, is the frame trap. So once you catch somebody, what do you do? So you can do your whole string, uh, but actually a really common theme in this game is that almost everything is disadvantageous. So the way you wanna set up your pressure is you want to try to introduce very small gaps and get used to doing this really early so that it doesn't feel weird later. For a simple example, I could do something like this and go for a throw. Okay, so this is a little gap. So I can't throw, I can't like mash throw. Oh, let me try to straight mash. Can't, can't mash in here. But getting used to adding these little delays will help just get some pressure and get some hits on people. 
once people stop pressing buttons on you, then you can start putting in your throws, and you got a simple attack or throw guessing game. This type of theme is really common in this game. Some characters can do some other stuff to mix you up, but if you start doing this early, uh, it'll help you out a lot. Then last would be to talk about throws in general too. So this game actually has a pretty long throw tech window, and throws are not like super fast. So this, this type of guessing game will be very common in most new fighting games that you play, where you can do this run up and either actually throw them, or back off, or jump back, or something to punish them for throwing. So I'm just gonna press throw no matter what. Okay. So if you need a way to like hit people that's decently reliable for a long time, I would really try to get used to using this. Another way you can do it that's not just running up in your face and backing off like that would be to do this. But you would have to figure out how to do it with your character because not everyone does it the same. So, so there, backstep killed me. The attack the throw. The jump, so I jumped away. I used a big attack that would reach there. If they block, I still have advantage. I'm not giving up my turn, really. And then if they throw, then I'll hit them. This is a nice little simple guessing game you could use to just get out the gate and get some simple offense going. Okay, so defense basic. So when you're starting this game, holding away makes you block. So in many of these type of games, it's really safe to just hold down back. Because if you hold down back, you'll beat moves that hit mid. So mids are, you can block them high or you block them low. And you'll beat lows. So lows specifically, you have to hold down back. So the only thing that will hit you would be an overhead. Now, the thing in this game is that the all-out attack, which I mentioned before, the A and B, everyone has a different one and everyone's are different speeds and do different stuff. Margaret has a really slow one. Like she's not, honestly, a competent Margaret player will not use this to try to hit you. It's extremely slow. Uh, Yukari's is slow-ish. Where uh, maybe you hit somebody online, but um, if you were playing like your neighbor or something and they saw this a couple times, you would probably not hit them. If you played Chie or Narakami or something, you might hit them with the, the all attacks. Their all attacks are kind of fast. Most people don't have just a, a button they could do that's overhead that's so fast that you can't like react to it. However, there are situations where you might not be able to see what's going on and the opponent can do like a high attack or a low attack, which is a called a, like a 50-50 mix-up. If you watch fighting in tournaments, you hear about it all the time. Yukari has a pretty simple one where you have the tornado and you kind of just jump and do low. So once you get to like that style of mix-up, it gets... Basically, you can't react to this, but it's not very common that someone can set this up. So for starters, just get used to blocking low and trying to see any all any all out attack that can come. Most characters have slow ones, so you'll probably be fine. The next thing that is really important for this game is uh, jumping rules. When you want to escape pressure by jumping, how do you do it, basically? This game has something special where you can be hit out of the air for a small window of time when you're jumping. So most games have like some really short amount of time, small frame window that you can't see. You can't actually see it. It's this animation. So I'm holding up. I'm still on the ground. So here I can't, uh, I can't block. And then I go in the air. So in this game, there's an additional small window of time where you will be hit also. This is really, really important to know. Uh, if you don't know this, you might be like, why am I getting hit randomly even though I'm jumping? It's not until you clear a certain height where you can just block and then you can block everything except for like uh, the 2B. There you go. A couple of characters have 2Bs that you can block. Uh, Yukiko, Yukari are the main ones I don't have to top my head. But uh, that's the main rules for jumping on defense, so keep that in mind. Then we have backdash. So backdash, everyone's backdash is in its one frame one for a small window of time. The reason why I'm talking about backdash rules is because of uh, this. In this game, you can't backdash on wake up. Oh. The, there's only one character in this game who's allowed to backdash on wake up, and it's Aegis in Orgia mode. Every other character cannot do it. Remember this. If you're from another game, remember this. This is really, really important to know because you're going to be like, why am I getting hit randomly? 
If you're new to fighting games, then boom, you're starting with a good habit by not doing backdash. And then next we want to go into roll. You might hear this called quick escape by some people, but most people call this roll. So this is projectile invincible. It is also strike invincible after a little while. Uh, but they can always grab you out of it. So it's a really small window at the beginning, but it's really vulnerable at the end. Let me try to get it. Mm -hmm. Different characters have different lengths for theirs. The main times I would recommend using it is if people are zoning you with projectiles to have like a, a long total duration. So like they're just slow. This is literally what you're supposed to do against this, by the way. There you go. If you time it right, you could roll through it and then punish. That's probably the main spot you want to do it. Another spot you want to do it is if someone is on, let's say someone is rushing you down and, and is trying to put themselves in the corner, you could use roll to get out. If they're constantly moving forward in the corner, just slip by with a quick little roll. If they throw you, they'll hit you, so just be careful for that. Uh, then we have guard cancel stuff. So we have guard cancel by doing forward A and B in block sun. And we have guard cancel roll by doing forward A and C. So it's the same inputs. Uh, your guard cancel roll is the same input as roll when block stun. And uh, your guard cancel is the same input as uh, your all out attack. So these are both metered options, meaning if you look at the bottom left corner, you need to use resource to use these mechanics. They can get you out of some tricky situations. When you have meter and you feel like you're in a rough spot, you can make it harder for your opponent to keep up their offense by using one of these two options. Then we have Burst. Burst is kind of flexible. There's a couple of use uses for Burst. So it is a combo breaker. This is the defensive Burst. Two is you can use it offensively multiple ways. So if one of these hits, your meter instantly fills. So that's one way you can use it offensively. Another way you can use it offensively in this game is the one more burst. In a combo, you can instantly pop them up and extend the combo. So you can turn like a small hit into a big hit. And the last one would be this, the Shadow Frenzy. Uh, which has its own set of rules, but it makes it so you can do combos that are not possible by canceling special moves and the special moves and making things cost different amounts of meter. At the start, I wouldn't really worry about Shadow Frenzy unless you're playing a shadow character. If you're playing a normal character, just don't worry about it too much. You can learn a little bit more about it later. If you are learning a shadow character, it's kind of mandatory you understand at least learn a couple of combos for for this relatively soon that's not to be day one but relatively soon then we must talk about uh awakening so this is awakening so when you go into awakening a few things happen so you get a defense bonus you get 150 meter max instead of 100 and you get access to a super you don't normally have so for margaret she has a uh, that not that <laughs> that's the pain one you get this it's hustle Toby. that's her awakening super so if I turn off Awakening, I just will never get it, ever, ever, ever. You can also see that I have 100 meter instead of 150. And as far as damage, right? So this is uh, 726, that's normal. And in Awakening, you get, I only do 443. So you can see the benefits of going to Awakening. Awakening and Burst are actually connected. So my personal recommendation if you're playing a normal character is to save your Burst for awakening because every character in the game gets a desperation super and even the fair ones the ones that do a lot of damage uh, that you can combo into can still turn the game around for you and then other characters get crazy special effects supers uh, in the case of Yukari I have shadow Yukari but if I was normal Yukari this is her awakening super this is tornado very 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 strong Okay, so next is, and, I, and people ask this question many times. I've answered it in a couple videos, but why to pick a shadow or normal version? This is what you get for playing a shadow. So the shadow characters get the old auto combo with the exception of new characters to ultimate. So like shadow Yukari and normal Yukari have the same auto combo because she's new to Ultimax where uh, Narukami, Mitsuru, Chie, they'll have a another auto combo, the old auto combo from Persona 4 Arena 1. Thing number two you get is that you get Awakening Supers always. Right? So here, Tornado once again. So here, I can't do it. I'm gonna do just this, this mine over and over. It will, it will never come out because I don't have access to it. 
you have slightly more HP than normal. You have a thousand more HP th than normal, but you will never get the uh, awakening defense buff, nor will you get the 150 meter either. And when you go into awakening, you get instant meter buff. So. immediately i got 50 meter and, and um now i have 50 meter the super and a defense buff just like that you'll never get that with shadows shadow characters also do less damage <laughs> might, it might sound funny because they're new memes if uh you know stuff about this game but they do less damage than normal characters so there's 726 versus 651 they do less damage now the benefits the main benefit is that you have access to the shadow burst so defensively you can use it the same so like if you can get them off you all the same, but when you activate this, you have access to special cancels that you don't normally have, as in you can do special moves in the special moves, and your meter cost for everything is drastically reduced. So your ability to spend all your meter on high damage combos is just way higher, way more often than a normal character. This is the main probably the main benefit outside of having access to awakening supers all the time they also build meter faster than normal characters as well in order to help with this kind of game plan of getting the resource and spending the burst offensively to do a lot of damage or create a unique situation nine meter right seven meter seems insignificant Forty forty three meter, right? As opposed to fifty five, right? It definitely, 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 definitely adds up. If I was hit this person again, I would have a hundred meter ready to go. So that's another benefit of playing a shadow character. For a quick reference of recommended, so which characters like you should probably pick the shadow version over the normal version. So Ken, most people recommend you should play the Shadow version. Yukari, it's actually either or is fine. I, I believe most people say that the Shadow version is better, but the normal version is also very good. Uh, I believe also Shadow regular Labyrinth is another one. Nanto, I think it's either or actually, as with Teddy. Mitsuru, it's pretty overwhelming that people say that the Shadow version is better. I guess it doesn't really matter. For Yukiko, I believe the Shadow version is better. Uh, for Narukami, I actually am under the impression that the normal version is better. Yosuke, I think either or is fine. Chie, it should be Shadow for her. Akiko, I think either version is fine. Kanji, actually I don't know yet. I think either is probably fine. And then for Junpei, a lot of people will say Shadow is better for him. And then Risa is kind of unknown. Either or is fine. So you can use this as a guideline in the comment section, by the way, if you guys want to correct me on this, then by all means, I am personally using Yukari for this version of the game. So I'm using Shadow Ikari. Another thing that I'm going to explain that will help you a lot in this game is the attribute system. So especially if you end up being interested in other Arxis games because you're a Persona fan who's starting this game for the first time, or maybe you're a Dragon Ball Fighters player who is exploring the other Arxis games, a bunch of Arxis system works games use this system, the attribute system. So what is it? So if we look at our lovely protagonist at the left side, Darukami, right? You can see he has uh, a head. <laughs> and a chest and then like he's got some legs and some feet so in this game the character's bodies are actually split up into different parts it sounds really silly but and then attacks have these properties as well so for example this move his 5b is a chest attack but the property is chest this is head head invincible against head moves almost all jump bits in the game are head property moves uh, where this is like a body type move where it's just general hitting all over i believe off the top of my head this is like a foot type move so what does this mean let's say with liz i do this sweep sweeps are foot type so i could use something that's invincible to foot moves to go over it. the mini jump from before similarly sweeps are invincible to chest moves after a small after a certain time so if i time this right I will never ever beat this sweep unless she doesn't leave. She'll always win. Where if I use a body move, I will win instead. So I'll win with this. 
I will, if I get a little bit closer, I'll win with this, where the sweep will just always, always, always beat my 5B, which is a uh, chest type move. Almost all air attacks in the game are head type moves. There's a very few exceptions, but they do exist. And then 2Bs generally have some type of head invincibility. In this game, jump-ins are still pretty good though, but uh, it's worth a shot, especially if you play uh, certain characters. So just keep this in mind in case you feel like there's a move that is really hard to deal with and you don't know what to do. You might want to see if there's like a special property on it where you could use another move to be invincible against it so that your opponent can't just do it over and over. So let's talk about meter and cancels next real quick. How do you get meter? Unlike most Arxis games, you don't get meter for running forward. A lot of uh, Arc System Works games like Guilty Gear and Dragon Ball, uh, you get meter for running forward, but this game you don't. But this game has a couple of unique things where, for example, if you get the first hit, you actually get a, a meter bonus for getting the first hit, as well as you get a small bonus for doing an auto combo and you get a, bon a bonus back to your burst. You get your burst back a little bit faster if you do the full auto combo. Once you get 50 meter, so you just get it by attacking. You don't get a lot for defending unless you use the instant block mechanic, which is like you block just before an attack hits you and you'll get a bunch of meter and you'll make the opponent less advantageous. Uh, it's something you can practice later, but just keep in mind you can get meter on defense, pretty important. Once you get to 25 meter, you can power up your special moves. So where like you'll have this fireball, normal fireball to be six. Once you get meter, you can press both the buttons to do a, a powered up version of skill boost. So a EX move. So this fireball turns into 236 CD, which costs 25 meter, has a bunch of special properties on it. When you get to 50, so not only do you get supers, uh, you still have your skill boost moves, but you also have one more cancel. So this is the game's RC, Roman cancel. It's you cancel back into neutral state so you can do stuff that you can't do normally. You can make up new ways to attack, new combos, things like that. The only thing I would say about one more cancel is that there's a shortcut where if you hold forward, you will dash automatically. So if you, if you run into a situation where you have to run right away, you can input your uh, one more cancel by holding forward and you will just hold forward. In the case where for some reason you need to be holding down, uh, I think it's only is a meat sort of thing. You can even do it with, uh, with three and you will run this whole time. You can see my last input is three. So you also get access to defensive options. The aforementioned guard cancel and guard cancel roll. On top of that, you also get access to the super cancel off DP. So we're gonna just a, little, a small segue into furious action. I will make a video just on this because I, I want to talk about all the strategies you can use against furious action but everyone has one. There are essentially five types of DPs. There is this. This is the very standard. If you've watched Street Fighter, this is the just standard DP. Dragon Punch It's invincible. You can cancel it into a super move on block or on hit. I'm not an Arcomen player, so I don't got these, <laughs> but uh, it is something you can do. Uh, since I have this here, I will show you the worst type, which is the grab type. Uh, this is invincible, but it will lose to anything that beats a grab and You can also reject it with the throw tech that you saw before if I wasn't a bum There you go <laughs> Okay, now Yosuke has this. This is a counter type DP. So When someone activates it, he'll parry and then Labrys has a guard point. So what this is is when you attack it so you guys hear that uh, guard sound? Okay. So when she does her DP, it makes the same sound. So even though you're hitting her, the game is considering her as blocking. Sounds good in theory, and then she follows up with it. So it sounds good in theory, but it's weak to like fast moves or people who have cancels off um, the attacks they're using. So it sounds good in theory, but it's not so great. Shadow Abrises is a little bit better than normal Abrises, by the way, but it's not like the best thing. And then the last one is arguably the best, but has the second biggest downside. Arguably the best, second biggest downside. The last type of DP, in my opinion, technically the strongest type with one of the biggest weaknesses out of all of them. It is the Persona DP. It's when your Persona does the DP for you. 
what why can this be bad like what is bad about this the good news is usually they all have special effects or like it's really hard to bait them or something but the downside is if for whatever reason you do not have a persona you can't do the dp at all which is also a small little segue to the persona basic system in general those little cards you see underneath the health bars that's a p are your persona cards so those are what give you access to your c and d buttons so if someone were to let's say empty this let's say for fun for some reason then you would just not be able to use the c and d button at all you would not have access to your persona back until you uh, fill it up again and it goes away for a while the more persona cards you have, the longer you have to play without them too. So it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty, pretty bad. The other way you can stop them from using persona moves and thus persona DP is this. You put on the silent status effect. So with the silent status effect, same, same type of thing. I just cannot use burst, nor can I use my persona buttons. That is pretty much it for the basics so there's still some mechanics that are in the game but these are like more advanced stuff this is a uh, just like a get your feet wet get familiar with the game and what's in the game and getting used to the terminology that people use everything else i generally assume that a total beginner is not watching so if you have any questions definitely feel free to leave them in the comments and people will definitely help you out with anything that you need